So, the number one search term of uh, uh, 2022 trending searches in Singapore. Um, yeah, this one is like, I was surprised. La. I was surprised. Were you surprised? Oh, really? Uh, it, I mean, it's surprising, but, after, but it, it totally makes logical sense la, to me. True, yeah. la, true. La. But, after, you, after you know what it is, yeah. Yeah. And the word is, is wait, I think... I think there's there's actually a an effect that we can play, you know, called oh, uh, really? like a Go drum roll, it. really using this. Go for it. Here. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, we I think we need a drum roll for a drum roll. Can you hear it? Is it? I don't hear anything. But maybe it's recorded on your. Kind end. I don't know. Fuck all drum roll is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe we'll but get it, we'll get yeah. Tristan to insert a drum roll right there. <laughs> yeah, we, we keep it real. We keep it real with that. Fuck all drum roll. Um, yeah, but yes, yeah. the, the the word the most search term in Singapore for 2022 is Wordle. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you've been living under a rock, Wordle is actually this this online game la, that. Mm. blew up during the pandemic. Um, mm, I think mm. it was in 2021 October when the creator yeah. made it public and mm. it fucking went apeshit viral. And yeah. in 2022, it got acquired by the New York Times for a seven-figure mm. sum in January. Yep. yep. And uh, why, why why are you so surprised that it's, uh, it's number one? Uh... Like like you like you like I was surprised, but the more I thought about it, I was like, oh okay, this this makes sense, lah. Because it's something that I think people still play today. Uh, mm. Apparently, the New York mm. Times said it brought in millions of new users uh, to play Wordle and some of the other games when they consolidated everything. Um, mm. And I think I do see every once in a while on social media people sharing their Wordle score. Uh, mm. So I was like, oh okay, mm. like, It's still it's still ongoing, like. It's it's almost like the crossword puzzle, like. It's it's here to stay, like. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's such a, uh, a brilliant uh, little simple game that has captivated everyone in the last year. Yeah, uh, if you think about it, it's a lot like uh, it's a I, to quote an article I, I I read. It's a lexical version of Mastermind. Mm. Remember that game, that old yeah, game yeah. that uh, if you ever took the SQ flight, then they would, they would give kids this little yeah, box correct, correct. with the colored bags, uh, and then it's actually a Mastermind. Game. I can't imagine why. Why they were used to give you those games? Because those little packs are so tiny. I can imagine any kid just like swallowing it, lah, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, they it's a they they describe it as a lexical version of Mastermind, yeah. and it's uh the the beauty of it, I think, is day and age. Because it really, is in the fact that um, it, it's perfect for this era because it's one word, it's one word a day, basically mm. you're presented one puzzle a day. Uh, so it's not too taxing on the brain. In fact, you think about it, a crossword, a daily crossword is quite taxing on the brain and more likely than not, most people can only solve like 40, 30 or 40% of the crossword puzzle. Right? Mm. So, but this is just one word that you do every day. Um, you know, you can, then the best part is you can share your result uh, in, in terms of how many guesses you took to to play the game, to, to win the game. Um, so everyone's talking about the same word and everyone's also understanding, you know, this is how how much, how difficult it was or how simple it was for you to guess this word. And you can sh- share your progress without giving any spoilers about what the actual puzzle is. That's yeah. the beauty of it also. You know, those colored, the colored squares, the color grid that you would use to share to show how well you did today's word. Though. So that's why it just, I think it's it captivated people. It, it tapped into people's uh, urge to need to share how well they they were playing the game and all. Um, plus, yeah, it was just simple enough for people to just pick up and, and you know, in the midst of doing laundry or in the midst of taking care of kids, you got one minute, you can just start playing Wordle, come back to it again later. So, yeah, it's just such a brilliant little piece of... Uh, of uh, It's such a brilliant little game that, that really... I understand why people are so hooked to it, even even in 2022. Uh, did, yeah. you, did you get into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I did for a while for for a phase, you know, where I was like, go, I mean, I started late, lah. But I just went to the backlog and just started doing them every day. Never got into the habit of doing it every single day. But for a while, yeah, I was like just playing it for nonstop for a while, lah. Yeah. Oh, really? So you shared it with your friends and family and all? Lah? No, I didn't bother sharing, but I just played it just because uh, out of interest, lah. Yeah. Just, I think... just the 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 whole a bit of a. Uh, 
a wheel of fortune kind of feel to it, lah. Yeah. I think I think what I find more amazing is actually the story behind Wordle. Are you mm, are you aware mm. of like how it was developed and and by who? Yeah, yeah, I am aware. But please, please enlighten. So, I mean, first of all, it's created by uh this just this solo developer called Josh mm. Wardle. Yeah. W a r d l e. Mm. So so I mean, come on, man. That's that's a. That's not really the reaction I was expecting from you, Terence. Uh, I would have appreciated no, a bit more I was, enthusiasm. I was gonna say that's like Causeway Link, uh, yeah, the perfect, it's like the perfect <laughs> name, <laughs> the perfect name. So he actually created the game in 2013, no, uh, mm. and it was inspired by Mastermind. Um, mm. And at at first, I think he just included all 13,000 possible five-letter words in the English language. But then mm. his wife um, had some difficulty recognizing some of the more obscure words, so she helped him trim it down to two thousand uh, more common words, lah. Um, mm. mm. Then in twenty fourteen, he finished the prototype. He lost interest, and then he put it aside. But during COVID, mm. when him and I think by then his wife um, got really into crossword puzzles and daily puzzles, they mm. they went back to this and they just started sharing it with their family, lah. Um, mm. And it was spreading, then he spread it with, uh, shared it with friends, and they shared it with friends. And then what caused the whole upswing, right, was, um, uh, I mean, he made it public in October, and then he found that it had become popular with a group of people in New Zealand who had created, mm. Mm. like, an emoji-style display of the guesses, which they shared mm. with friends. And then he thought, oh, shit, that's pretty cool. So he incorporated it into his app, which is what people mm. started sharing, like. Mm. And after that, it went ape, went ape shit because um, I think uh, on November first, uh, it, it there were ninety players, and mm. then by January there were three hundred thousand people, and a week yeah. after that there were two million people. Mm, mm, yeah. So it just went crazy, and and I mean even he said that uh, it was a bit overwhelming because it made him and his partner famous. There were so mm. many copycats that were coming out. Um, some guy who created another app called Wordle, incidentally, five years ago, which was a paid app, had 200,000 downloads in uh, one week. Wow. Because wow. people thought it was an actual game. So he donated a bunch of the proceeds to to uh, charities. Uh, so mm. when, when New York Times came and offered to acquire, uh, George, uh, the founder himself said, yeah, he had no intention of monetizing it and dealing with the copycats was becoming a headache. So he was like, yes, please take it off me. And mm, and he sold it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So so and he he came up with it when he was working at Reddit, and he actually came up with two other brilliant things for Reddit. I think this guy is like a how you say just a a, a genius at creating this kind of shit. The first was this thing called yeah. the button. Did you ever mm. hear of it? Yeah, I think we talked about it on the podcast, didn't we? No, uh, we talked about the place. Yeah, the place. Yes, yes, yes. Which yeah, was also yeah. something he created. Yeah, so so right. the place was like this thousand by thousand pixel thing on Reddit where any user could change uh, a pixel at a time. And it was left mm-hmm. open for months. Like, and the designs and images that came up were insane. The button was this thing where there was just a button on, on a page on Reddit uh, and there mm. was a 60 second timer. You press it, yeah. the timer resets. Mm-hmm. And the whole experiment was to see how long would it take for it to actually reach the zero la. And it took mm-hmm. two months and four days. I see. So throughout yeah. that time, there was always someone who would press it. La. And the moment it reached zero, it became like archived. Mm. I see, I see. Yeah, so whoa, so this guy is like fucking genius. And now he works for Mischief, the company that done, you know, the Satan shoes and like um, mm, mm, mm. Yeah. all those funky drops every two weeks. La. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like he's a guy who knows how to uh, play within the space of... Uh, Social media and yeah, and, and ma- marry a lot of the the you know the the basic human uh instincts and tendencies we have with things that we do on media. Like I can imagine, like you know, when you're fidgeting or just sitting around and there's a button, you know, you just want to keep you 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 can just keep pressing it. Like because I watch my child how how he plays, like, and sometimes he gets obsessive with like doing something. Just over and over again, just for the kick of seeing the light light up and all that, right? Mm. And it start slowly. Then the brain starts to, you know, you start to sink into this like, let's play a game and see how long I can keep the light on, kind of thing, like. So, you know, that kind of instinctive human behavior, being able to map it into something digital and then run an experiment about it, it's just a, 
it's very, it, it shows that this guy you know how, knows how to think laterally like, right yeah very it's interesting. cool man super cool yeah 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 super cool super cool I mean something like Wordle is such a simple concept but you know like like the fact that it's like mastermind like you know that, that someone didn't come out of it before given that mastermind was from the 70s and 80s and all uh, it's kind of crazy like, right but uh, maybe maybe it's just now that apps and then and, and all that are so uh, uh, everywhere it's so easy for people to play that's why it really blew up it went viral like, right yeah I mean even in Singapore yeah. right there was Wordle that came up yeah, yeah. Right. So all the spin-offs, are, right? Not the yeah, spin-offs. Yeah, so I mean, uh, what, what do you call these? Like tributes or, or, or adaptations? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, number one, number one, number one. 